Hi everybody, this is Tracy Malone. Welcome back to my channel. If you're not subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button down below. Today, I am going to introduce you to a Sir Thriver that I am so excited for you to meet. This woman was kicked so low that we would certainly understand if she never got back up again. She was physically abused, she was emotionally abused, she was sexually abused by the person she was supposed to trust the most. She escaped her country with $100 in her pocket, nowhere to go, and rebuilt her entire life. I love that kind of story. It happens every day, and your story can be like that too. Today, my guest is Verna Haywood, um, and we're going to hear her story and hear how she got through it and what she's doing now to help others. So without any further ado, let's welcome Sir Thriver, Verna Haywood, to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me, Verna. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Tracy. Thank you for having me. I am so glad that you are here because, you know, when we first talked, I know that you have been with an abusive person. You married one, correct? Yes, I did. I did. So, so when you when you were first marrying him, when did you first start to see some red flags? Oh, I, you know, when you in when you are a Christian and you're in church, you tend to think that you you you're seeing things, you're making it up. But I guess I saw it from the very beginning, but wanted to ignore it um, simply because I was being told that you're getting older. And uh, you want to have children, all your friends are getting married, uh, you're worship leader, so you have, you know, position in the church, and you're thinking, yeah, yeah, maybe I'm, maybe I'm overlooking, maybe I'm seeing what's not there. But I, it was from the beginning, and I chose to ignore it, because sometimes you think you can make the person over, especially when you're a Christian, in inverted commas. You think you can change them but actually you can't no, no and i found that out um, the hard way i suppose the other part of it as well is there are several things so many times i've noticed it but ignore one thing or the other oh it's not going to be lead to that it's not going to lead to that and i think the we went to visit his mom and his sister and the way he spoke to his mother, I thought, oh, my word, there's no hope for you, girl. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing now, but it wasn't a laughing matter then. Mm -hmm. And I said it to him. I said, I'm not sure about this because the way you just spoke to your mom, I have been told the way a man treats his mom is how he's going to treat his wife. And the way you just spoke to your mom, I don't know. I can't see you treating me any differently. I mean, he talked about it, you know, how they can cover things. And, and we talked about it and it was like, oh no, it's not going to be like that. Blah, 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 blah. But that's still nagging at the back of your head. And you're thinking, no, that's not appropriate. The way you just spoke to your mother, this is the woman who gave birth to you. And if you can speak to her like that, I, I can't imagine what you're going to say to me or do to me. And I remember we had to meet because he was a, he was in the army and we had to go down to his barracks to meet with his commander. And I was given this long talk about how I should look after him and treat him and everything like that. And I should remember that if anything happens, he has a home. And I'm thinking, so what happened to me if he ill treats me? What do I have? What backup do I have? And there didn't seem to be anything because they had to, before we got married, they had to know who I was, where I was, what was I involved in anything. So they really scrutinize you before you get married. So I was like, okay, so what happened if things are turned the other way around? In their mind, he was a saint, you know, no soldier will do anything. Um, they are saints, they wouldn't abuse or anything like that. So you're thinking, well, maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and then came the night of the wedding. Oh, no. My mom wasn't there to represent me. So my auntie came for the wedding to represent. My mom and my auntie are identical twins. Now, I have never seen my auntie. All I know is that I have an aunt who lived in England. 
And I was so happy that she was coming because my mom disappeared. And we haven't seen my mom since 1983, October 83. And I was getting married in 96. 95, 96, yes. And um, so she came for the wedding and he walked in on my aunt while she was changing because he came to visit. And I was like, you have to be kidding. You can't walk in on my aunt like that. You knock the door before you enter. And we had some friends who were helping sort things out for the wedding. And he just had a go at me and pushed me. And we were like, is this real? And as he pushed me, I pushed him back. And he started, oh, if you damage my back and if you, if you cause me to fall, I'm going to kill you. Holy, that's the night before the wedding. I mean, I had come up some things before because he tried one time. He wanted to tell me how to do praise and worship. And I didn't want, I wasn't going to do it his way. So he swung my hand behind my back in a vice. And don't ask me, Tracy, how I got out of that vice. But I did. And that angered him because he couldn't break my hand. He couldn't do what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh my goodness this is not real. This is not happening. So I said to my auntie, I'm not getting married. There's no way after this, am I getting married? And she said, Verna, oh, my second name is Deborah. She don't call me Verna. She said, Deborah, I'm just here to support you for the wedding. He's just jealous that we've been spending a lot of time together. Mm. I'm going to go back to England and you're going to have your whole life ahead of you. So don't not get married because of this Mm -hmm. carry on with your wedding everything will be fine (laughs) ouch ouch your intuition was screaming and 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 like we all have well-intentioned family members that of course they can't foresee what's going to happen but you know that's really bad advice given what ended up happening to you and i want to tell everybody this was happening in grenada am i correct it happened in Trinidad. I was born in Grenada, but grew up in Trinidad. Okay. okay. So culturally, are there differences there that would be like respect thy husband and, and that sort of thing? Or yeah, it's 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 respect. And and then I guess it's because it was a military wedding and there were lots of people traveling from different countries coming and you're thinking, well, you don't want to let anybody down. But I got to the point on that morning of the wedding that I didn't, I didn't, you know, you would normally go get your hair done, get your makeup done, get your nails done. Nothing. (laughs) Nothing. I did nothing. Wow. And then came the time to dress. So my friends came for me. You have to get dressed. You have to get dressed. There was no zeal to get dressed at all. And I wasn't aware because my uncle was giving me away. So I wasn't aware that my auntie had already told my uncle what happened the night before. So my uncle was auntie. He was not, I didn't realize that. So by the time he came with a car, I just put a little makeup on like, no, no big deal. And then I got into, we were late (laughs) and I got into the church and he looked at me. As I got closer and he said, what's this? And I just said, what did you expect? Ooh, good for you. What's this? What's this? When you come to church, you even your makeup is better than this. So what's this? You didn't go? I said, for what? What am I, what am I going for? Mm-hmm. Wow. No, this is it. <laughs> Take me or so, leave me. I'll be happy to leave. <laughs> uh, so then I, I, my auntie was to my left. So I looked at her on that side and she was like, wow. And then the minister, I, because the minister asked me three times, are you sure you want to get married, Werner? Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Because they have seen me before. They know when I dress, what I look like when I'm dressed. So this is your wedding. They're expecting something, Uh you know, a bit more. And they're not seeing that there was no joy, no nothing coming. I was just doing it because 
because they told you to <laughs> yes because but then when he asked again i said yeah the third time i said yes and then he asked my uncle who do you give this woman to and my uncle just stood there <laughs> It sounds like a, fam a family comedy show. <laughs> um, because I wasn't aware my auntie told him, my uncle stood there. Who do you give this woman to? I don't know. <laughs> <Not That's> like, <laughs> wow. Why? You mean you don't know? Who do you give this to? I don't know. <laughs> And then I hit him with my, uh, with my elbow, and then my uncle said, in text time, said, oh, that <laughs> guy there. <laughs> oh my God, you can't make this up. This is awesome. I know it doesn't get a happy ending in the end. It, this, your happy ending is you, but let's talk about the middle where, where like, it got physical, correct? Um, yes, it got physical. It got physical because initially, first the... Uh, the, the 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 first few weeks was fine but then again it's like ownership i own you now so i can do what i want so the first thing i had to do <laughs> was to go to the bank with him and make sure i open the account with him so that my salary goes into the account wow and he had control and his cousin who worked at the time at the bank, she, she was the one doing it. And she said to me, Verna, don't do it. He's my cousin, but don't do it. And then he said to her, what do you mean? She said, Verna, do not do it. I'm telling you, don't do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I'm the one that have to live in the house, not you. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, that sort of thing. So I'm laughing now because it's like a, a relief. Um, um, so I did it. And when I go to work, and there were times I go to work, I used to have to walk to work because I didn't have money to pay transport. So I used to have to leave home early enough so that I can get to work. And as I finished work, I had to head home because it's like, you know, like you spit on the ground mm -hmm. and you have to get home before that spit is dry. <laughs> oh, wow. That's how I found myself. And I used to call work sometimes three times a day to find out where I am until my boss came and she said to me one day, she said, Verna, what's going on? And eventually I had to say something to her. And she said, okay, it just stays here. But from now on, when he phones, the answer will be, she's at work. You can talk to her when she comes home. Because she says, if you call the army base, they will tell you, you can't speak to him now he'll have to wait till he get home mm -hmm. so we will treat him the very same way like that and of course he had a back issue um where we thought okay we will have the surgery at the general hospital no he wanted to have it private You're fourteen thousand for yeah. private. the same doctor on the hospital mm -hmm. same doctor he's going to pay private to do the same surgery he can get in the hospital for nothing mm -hmm. and I had to find that because he decided he wasn't working because he had a bad back mm. and I had to it was at the um it was at the seven day Adventist hospital every single day I had to be at the hospital I had to sleep at the hospital so I can help look after him be him do everything mm -hmm. And then some of his friends from his previous church will come to look for him and say, when I go home and take a rest, we will stay here with him. And then he started accusing me of being with them. When do I find the time? <laughs> wow. When do I find the time? So I don't understand. They are in the hospital with you. Mm -hmm. I go home to take a rest. I come back, they leave. Where, where, where is the timing in that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought that was going to be over. By the time we got home, I happened to, we were up. Uh, thank God his niece and his nephew was there. So at least I can go to work and then come back home. They would be home with him during the day. And I came home one evening and we were in the room 
watching telly because there was a telly in the bedroom. Um, and so I just leaned over to get, get something and he had a baton by the bed and he took the baton and started hitting me. What? What for? Oh, you're trying to kill me. I didn't kill you in the hospital. I'll kill you now. Yeah. I had all the opportunity then. Yeah, I fed you. I fed you, I washed you, I clothed you. Mm -hmm. And now you're telling me I'm trying to kill you? Wow. I'm getting goosebumps. So, yeah, so it was about midnight. I just walked out of the house and thought I'll just go to my adoptive aunt and walk all the way to Diumating from Belmont. And then I got to the hospital and I thought, this is silly midnight, anything could happen to you on the road. So I went to the hospital and while I was there in casualty, there was a, the person that I saw was a member in church, was a doctor. And she asked me what happened and she could see the swelling and I told her what happened. So she said, do you want to make a report? I said, no, I don't want to get him in jeopardy with his job. So she took me aside um, to the doctor's quarters and we, she dealt with me and everything. We didn't make any report, but she called him to let him know that I am in the hospital and they are aware of what he just did and I will be coming home. And should it happen, I haven't filed a report, but a report will be given should it happen again. So that kind of like calmed it down. So I went home and there I was, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to blah, 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 blah. Oh, come to bed. I said, no, I'll, I'll, I'll stay here. And the sad thing was, Tracy, is that he came, when he came, the only thing I didn't do was buy the house. The house was fully furnished. I rented a two-bedroom apartment, fully furnished. Yeah, I was thinking by the time I got married, all he has to do is buy the house. We have every single thing. He didn't have to buy a thing. He didn't have to bring a thing when we got married. But there was one thing my great grand aunt used to say, my grandmother, never marry a man and bring him in your home. Mm -hmm. Let him provide for you. Hmm. First mistake. <laughs> First mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I had a friend who was getting married and I said to her, don't buy a wedding dress because I have a wedding dress. It's just a waste of money. It's just going to be hanging up there. So you can have my wedding dress. You can borrow it. Don't buy one. Hmm. I like that. So I went to help her with his wedding, with her wedding. And he ran after me to take the key from me. Where are, I, where are you going? What are you going to help for? She can't have your wedding dress. This is my wedding dress. You didn't buy it. She's having it. And so he grabbed the key from me in front of everybody in the street. And my landlady had to call me and say, are you okay? Mm -hmm. So my, grand, my landlady after that started listening to hear song to find out if I was okay. Because she knew other people who was in the army. So she started questioning who he was, what he was up to, how much they know about him. And although that person had retired and in the States, he was inquiring um, about him because my wedding dress was given to me by this gentleman that used to help him. So he was, he bought my wedding dress for me. So you didn't buy. And then she found out, she found out a lot of things about him, but didn't tell me. And she said, the reason why I didn't tell you when she found that I was leaving, she said, the reason why I didn't tell you it's because when people make up in their marriage, people names get calling and I didn't want to have any problems. So that's the reason why I didn't tell you. But now you are leaving, I can tell you. And then she told me a whole lot of things. Wow. So, so all of this, you have been through torture. You are just constantly dealing with crazy, right? This stuff, you can't make it up. He's He's like reactionary he's doing all these things what was the thing that pushed you to get away and and i know that your getting away was a pretty amazing story in 
leaving and heading back to the UK to be with their auntie, right? So yeah. tell us, what was it that pushed you to that moment? Was it anger that just like, I'm not taking this anymore? And then you, you went, was it, what was it? Well, it was a combination of things because I was a worship leader in church. And I took that very seriously because the thing is, is that when you're leading people into worship, it's not about you, it's about them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I felt if it was not right in my home, I couldn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So I spoke to my pastor and then he came down and he spoke to pastor about lots of different things. And I said to pastor, I said, listen to me, the next time he raised his hand at me, I am telling you, his hand, I will pray a prayer. His hand will remain in the air and he will never touch another woman. Never. Hmm. Pastor looked at me and said, Vernon, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't pray that kind of prayer. And then he looked at my pastor and his wife and he said, I didn't know she was thinking that way. And he said to him, he said, you have to be, <laughs> something has got to be wrong with you. You hit her. And you're doing those things and you don't think she would pray that kind of prayer. Mm -hmm. He said, the level of worship that Verna and her team, the worship team is doing right now, if she pray that prayer, it will happen. And he said, he's not going to do it again, but that's just talk because it started again. And I just said, the one thing that I knew because I had gone to sexual abuse earlier as a child I came to understand that reading the scripture that God says in his word that I will never leave you nor forsake you when your father and your mother forsake you I will take you up and I held on to that and it says I have carved you in the palm of my hands and your cares are forever before me Okay. So it didn't matter who else is in the world. Mm -hmm. He have carved me in his hands and my cares are forever before him. Mm -hmm. He would never leave me nor forsake me. Mm -hmm. When my mother and father forsake me, he will take me up. Mm -hmm. And I held on to those. So those were my affirmation. Those were the things that I was saying. He said he would never leave me nor forsake me. He said no harm will come to me. So after all these things started happening, I'm going to work and having to run home and all these, I just decided, okay, father, I'm working here in the sanitarium. We call it the madhouse. Um, I was in the accounts department. I'm working here, but I will not be a patient here. Mm. And I am not dying either. Mm. So you have got to get me out of here. I can go to the States because my auntie lives in New York. I can go to auntie, I can talk to her and I can go there. But New York is too close because he has family in New York as well. So the safest place for me to go is England, millions of miles away. He can't come there that quickly. He can't get to there so fast. And besides that, he had a friend in, I won't call her name, he had a friend in church. And she said to me, she was going to England. She said, Werner, get to England. Can't touch you there. Mm. And so I started praying about it. And I started just talking to God. You need, I need to get out of here. I'm not dying and I'm not going mental. Mm -hmm. You promise you will never leave me nor forsake me. You promise that my cares are forever before you. You promise you have carved me in the palm of your hands. And those... <laughs> kept having that dialogue <laughs> um and so he hit me again um I think it was Christmas time and I walked out and went and stayed with some friends and then I was convinced to go back home and it happened again a Sunday after church and I had a friend at home and I gave her my passport I'm going to walk her out the streets because I knew he would search me, can't search my friend. Mm. So I gave him my passport and my passport was out of the house and I started making arrangements. Mm. And I left my job of 15 years and I had some help 
and I came to England with a hundred pounds in a suitcase. Wow. And that was it. That, that's just the beginning because the, the best part of your story is coming up where you have gotten there and you've healed and now you're helping others, right? This is the turnaround and the, the happy ending, if you would. So how did you heal after all of that abuse? I felt that because I was betrayed before when I was younger, I felt that this is the one person that should protect me. Mm -hmm. And I suppose I told him before we got married, I felt I needed to say to him, these are the things that happened to me when I was younger. And if you do certain things, it would trigger certain things. So I want you to know before we get married, this, this has happened. So if I, you find me reclusive or anything like that, it would mean that you have said something that will cause me to withdraw. Mm -hmm. So sex could be a problem. Mm -hmm. If you use certain, if you say certain things or do certain things, I'm letting you know now sex could be a problem. So I didn't hide anything. I was upfront mm -hmm. and that was used against me as a weapon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I got away, I was still frightened um, because I didn't stay in London with my auntie. I didn't like London. I went up to um, stay with some friends up north. And when the phone rang, I would tremble when the phone rang. And because once they call his name, I, I would tremble. Mm -hmm. And they noticed that. Uh, um, and they kept asking questions and I wouldn't say anything. And then eventually I had to say what was happening so that the phone call will stop. Mm -hmm. So although he wasn't close by, couldn't get to me, just hearing his name and hearing his voice and put fear mm -hmm. and I needed to get rid of that. So I stopped taking any phone calls. And then he wrote me stating that he wanted us to get back together. <laughs> Uh, because divorce was not on my mind at that point. I just wanted to get away and to teach him a lesson. And then I said, okay, if you want us to get back together, he'll have to date me. <laughs> and he said, date you? I said, yes, he'll have to date me from afar. What do you mean by that? I said, date. Talk. <laughs> yeah. I date. And then he said, over my dead body. Okay. Wow. So then you're not serious then. You just wanted to get me back for what? Mm -hmm. So you can start all over again. Because this time when I get back, I am sure I'm coming out alive. Mm. So since you can date me from afar and it's over your dead body, so be it. And that was when I think I broke it mm -hmm. because I wasn't afraid anymore. Yeah. I could handle my own. Mm -hmm. And because I was a, I was a trained therapist working, um, I did like a holistic therapy and stuff like that. And he said to me, I don't see why I didn't go back and do accounting. You clean people dirty feet. What is that? I said, you have no clue huh? about what I do. You don't even understand the importance of the feet, the foundation of the body. You stand on it. It be like a, a foundation for you. So you don't have a clue. So they even talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I could, I had my voice, mm -hmm. but I got my voice back because I was able to reflect and revitalize myself and from that refreshing renewing of who Verna could be and what I was created for. Mm -hmm. And because when I was, I wanted to go straight to university after studying and my lecturer, I'll always remember her. I will always remember where I am is because of her. Mm -hmm. She said to me, you have a gift. 
go out and use your gift. Don't go to university. Not that anything is wrong with university, but don't go to university right now. Mm -hmm. Go use your gift, come back, and then go to university. That way you don't remain just a, a, um, an academic. Not that anything is wrong with academia, mm -hmm. but you have a gift. Don't lose your gift. Right. And she enrolled me to, um, to do an interview to work on cruise liners. And I was like, okay, I'm dark-skinned. Mm -hmm. I'm the eldest on the team. There's no way I'm going to be chosen to work on a mega cruise liner, not happening. Mm -hmm. And I went home and I told them and said, well, and she's just playing you on. Anyway, I decided, I went to college and she said, have you done your CV? No. But I asked you to, I said, I didn't think you were serious. She said, anyway, you're doing the interview. Okay. 10 of us did the interview and two of us got through. Two people got through. That's all I knew. Two people got through. Okay. So I resigned to the fact that it, I wasn't one of them. And then she called me aside and she said, don't say anything, but you are one of the two. So would you get your CV ready? Yay. <laughs> See, all these opportunities come when we're brave enough to stand up to the abuse, when we take charge of our own life and... Yeah find a way um, to find hope because that's really one of the things that outshines the fear that you've been living with right to find the hope and to say I want to build a new life and just go out yeah. there and do it so I'm so proud of you that you did that um, if you were to tell our audience today who has had similar situations you know from the physical abuse to the emotional abuse if you were to tell them three things for them to help them heal, what would your advice be? The first thing I would say is surround yourself with good people. Mm. Surround yourself with good people. But most importantly, listen to your heart. Be guided by that. Your intuition is something we all have. And your intuition is your life. Save that is your spirit, your Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. It's your guide. It never fails you. So listen and choose the right people to speak to. Don't choose people who are going to, oh, who are you? Oh, you can't do this. The moment you hear you can't, it's time to drop them. Mm -hmm. Drop them like, mango is falling off a tree you know <laughs> just drop them basically because they're not going to do you any good at all mm -hmm. they're not going to seek your interest number one if they care about you they would push you forward i knew i had friends who cared about me but i didn't listen to them they could have seen what was happening and that those were church friends so they could see what was happening but i ignored because i thought or, you know, you want to get married, you want to have children and do all of that. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about whether you have children or not, because there are so many kids. Are, for me right now, I don't have any kids. I had two miscarriages. So that was another thing to deal with. I had two miscarriages. So you know who are my babies? My sister, uh, who's recently passed away, used to tell me when I was 18, when I asked her, who are your children? When are you going to make me an, an, an auntie? She said, my nieces and my nephews are my aunt, I, are my kids. And for me, my nieces and my nephews are there, but my clients are my babies. <laughs> nice, nice. You know, my clients are my babies. So when I do something, I do it from the heart mm -hmm. because that's where the healing comes from. The healing comes from the heart. It doesn't come from the head. It said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. You believe with your heart, not your head. Mm -hmm. You believe from here. So this is your guide. Be guided by that. So have good friends and don't eat alone. When I say don't eat alone, mm -hmm. you know when you go to dinner, <laughs> Tracy, 
when you go to dinner and you're eating, you're mm -hmm. eating the food just because you need to eat it. But when you're around good friends and you have good conversation, oh, it tastes so much sweeter. <laughs> Enjoy life is your message here, right? Find, find the, 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 that was your first thing is find the support system, find the good friends, find the people that support you, not take you down and listen to your intuition because we all heard it, right? But, but we excused it away. There were so many red flags in everyone who's listening to today's life that they just looked at and went, well, he's having a bad day or she's kind of always like that. That's just her. You know, they all have the excuses, but it's us going, you know what? I don't want to make excuses. If I have to make excuses for someone, run away. That is not how we should like think about life. And, and that is one of the biggest red flags. If you have to make excuses, run. This is the right. moral of your story is mm -hmm. you can create a new life. Both you and I have completely reinvented ourselves after abuse. And you you know, not that everybody's destined to become a coach and help people through this, but like with the work that we do and, and we did for ourselves, like we want to share it. We were like, whoa, let me, let me teach you how to get through this. Let me be your Sherpa and guide you through this pain because the unbelievable beauty on the other side of being free and knowing yourself is what we all want to achieve and mm -hmm. you have done this so eloquently can you tell people really quickly because we're running out of time um what you do now with helping people because we've got all these signs behind you what do you do to help people and how can they reach out and find you get more information well i do holistic therapy um and i coach you I work with people from the inside out. So I look, I do consultation and look at you. I do anything from massages to facials to everything else, but also do, I have a, um, a program called the three steps to wholeness. And the three steps to wholeness is looking at, is a three R's, which is reflect, revitalize and renew. And somewhere in between there, there is a detox. So you need to detox. So when I talk about detox, is detoxing friends we talked about, not being afraid, cleansing. So just as you would cleanse your body naturally, you need to cleanse your body spiritually mm -hmm. to move on to the next step. So you can find me, I uh, have my website is called um, Lovey Refresh, www.loveyrefresh.co.uk. You can also find me uh, on the Verna, Verna underscore Harry on Instagram. And I have Lovey Refresh on Facebook as well. And I do have a YouTube channel, but I, 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 I can't remember the name of it. I'm really sorry. <laughs> name, don't you worry about that. We will make sure that they find your name. Um, I am so grateful that you came and joined me today. I, I cannot thank you enough um, because your story is you know i don't want to say that common but but it is a journey that so many of my viewers have had to deal with and thank you for your bravery because it takes courage to sit there and tell your story but i also know that when we tell our story that's where the courage comes in it cannot survive shame cannot survive without the light so when we shine the light on and go yep this is what happened to me but here i am now like this is what everyone wants to be when they get through the other side. So thank you for showing us that you have that strength and, and for your bravery, because uh, I know it's not easy to tell your story and I really appreciate it. So thank, thank you, you so much for joining me. Thank you. You're welcome. And by the way, I'm also writing my book, which is called Unstoppable. Oh. How to live a life of queens. Yay. When will that be ready? Unstoppable. How to live an empowered life. <laughs> Yay, when will it be ready? I'm hoping to have it ready by January. So yeah, hopefully before, but I'm giving myself to January too. Well, this, this video is going to last forever. So that will be January 2022, everybody. Let's look for that book. Um, <laughs> and uh, I am so excited to have met you. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it so much. Thank you.